Well, it's been a much longer time than I had planned, but I am back with another video. Now I'm gonna open this video with just a little short explanation of what has been going on. There's been a lot that's happened with Liverpool and football, obviously, you know, since the end of the season, uh, the end of the Premier League season, the FA Cup has been played, um, and it was a very, very good game by all accounts, controversial moments and stuff like that as well. Obviously the Champions League and the Europa League has been kicked back into action as well and there's been stuff to look at stuff to do Liverpool have made a signing and, and there's rumours and stuff like that and Trent Alexander-Arnold has won young player of the year and stuff like that as well um all things that I haven't jumped on and made a video about and I'll tell you exactly why and I'll be blunt and honest about it as well um my mental health has been in the absolute toilet in the last couple of weeks really has nothing to do with football or anything like that it is purely um a work-based mental health issue uh, that I have at the moment. There's not a great deal I can do about it, apart from try to sort of work through it a little bit. It has impacted why I can't make videos as well, because I've been doing different shift patterns and stuff like that. So I've been going from very, very early mornings, which I've talked about before on in some videos, to afternoon work and stuff like that, which is my preferred shift if I'm gonna be on one. And then I've been working night shift this last week and I am just in a constant flux of just different sleeping, non-sleeping states, I will say, because I don't sleep very well as it is. So it's been very non-existent um, in terms of sleep over the because of the change in shift patterns and stuff like that, which is just not understood by my uh, place of work. Obviously, being in the UK, we have hit a recession so finding other work is pretty much going to be next to impossible. Um, and also finding something that's worthwhile doing as well that can, you know, at least give you a glimmer of happiness as well. But that's where it is. Um, I'm not going to go too far into everything, you know, mental health wise. All I would urge people to do is try not to get yourself into a situation like I did. My situation was I had a very troublesome issues at a previous job that made me jump out of out, jump out of that job into this one because I was trying to get a mortgage at the time as well um which is a big positive having you know trying you know buying a house and stuff like that it's it's massive it's huge it's a big responsibility as well also is also a reason you can't just turn around and say well I'm going to jack this job in and just like coast it for a while can't do that so just got to ride it out for now don't get into a situation where you just dive into a job and just hope for the best. Don't do that. Um, it's not going to be good for you in the long term anyway. Now, thank you every, every everyone who watches these videos as well and actually hasn't, you know, I, I expected like subscribers to have maybe have like dropped a little bit at least, um, maybe even quite a bit. But the fact that it actually hasn't moved in the slightest I appreciate that. I really do. I'm, I'm not saying it, it takes no effort to, you know, not unsubscribe to someone, you know. But anyway, I appreciate the people that are still here that are watching these videos anyway. So let's get straight into some of the football news that I can talk about Liverpool too. And this actually brings me a lot of joy being able to talk again about Liverpool and football and stuff like that. Now, I'm going to go through. Uh, it's on a uh, squawker about Costantinos. Simikas. Now, in it, it actually says that his name is pronounced C Me Cas. So that's very, very good. That's good for someone like me. I kind of assumed it was a little bit like that, but it's good to have that backup to know that that is how we say his name, Simi Cas, which is very, very good, very, very cool, very important detail. Anyway, um, we have signed a left back who is five foot ten, who came from Olympiakos, and I honestly, I, when I when I go into work. Uh, whenever I see him, there's an Arsenal fan who used to be a supervisor there, like at my work. And whenever I see him, he always makes some comment about Liverpool. Like he was telling us that Liverpool were garbage after we won the Premier League. He said the same thing after we won the Champions League as well. It's just that Arsenal fan mentality. Like everyone else is garbage apart from, you know, those that are signing 32, 32 year old uh, William. But hey, let, let's let's not get into that. You know, let's not get into that too much. Let's not make it too deep. Can't get too personal, can we? Um, but he made a comment of like, oh my God, you, you, who is this? Uh, Simikas, Simikas, and I'm like, well, he was good enough to knock you guys out of the Europa League, and literally, dude just walks away, but he was, now, I'm going to tell you straight away, 
I watched that Europa League um, game between Arsenal and Olympiacos as well. And I will tell you for a fact right now, I didn't look at any particular player because it's not a team that I'm invested in. Not, neither of these teams are teams that I was invested in. I just watched the game as a fan and just watched the game just happen as it did. I was I liked how Olympiacos you know, played the, the game of football. I liked the chances that they created as well. Um, I felt that they're a very... You know, they like to go and create chances to attack teams as best as they can and they will make it difficult for teams with a high press. Now, all of these things are really, really good key factors into why Liverpool went for Simicast. Because high pressing, it's exactly what we do. Going onto the front foot is exactly what we do. If you look at, obviously, what Robertson does on the left-hand side, if we're going to use an example... Use Rob Roberts on the left hand side. That man is up and down. He's up and down all the time, and so is this guy Costas uh, Simicast. There we go. I almost forgot. I nearly said Costas Manolas. I'm like that's a completely different Greek player. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, he's always up and down. Very very energetic. Very pacey. Probably a little bit quicker than Robertson. If anything, we don't. I'll be honest, I don't really know what we're getting from, you know, I didn't pay particular attention to him when we were playing, uh, when they were, Arsenal were playing, Olympiacos, but they played good football as a collective unit. And I've got, you know, un, I've got an unlimited amount of trust in our transfer policy and Jurgen Klopp and everyone that's involved in transfers at Liverpool because of how well all of our transfers have done for us. 11.7 million, I think that's the fee that we paid for him. He's the most expensive fullback that Jurgen Klopp has bought at Liverpool. 11.7 million. Second most expensive one was Robertson for like eight. To have two fullbacks for less than 20 million, two left backs, I should say, for less than 20 million. That could come in, you know, obviously Robertson, is, he's the best left back in the world. Obviously, there's no debating that one whatsoever at all. Then you're going to have someone like um, Simicast come in as well. And by all means, he has all the attributes to be either the perfect backup or as it is billed by Jurgen Klopp and everyone else to provide very, very real competition for Andy Robertson at left back as well. So it's a very, very good thing as well. I want to go through a couple of things here as well uh, that Squawker, um, squawker.com have provided. Um, we're going to go through a couple of facts. Only a couple, not, not, not that many. Alfonso Davies, who plays for Bayern Munich, again, quality left back as well. Brilliant left back. Um, and Nelson Semedo, who plays for Barcelona, Portuguese right back. Um, they are the only defenders to complete more take-ons than Simicas. In the Champions League. Now Alfonso Davies got 19. Semedo got 16. Simicast got 14 as well. What would that mean for Liverpool going forward? It's take-ons. So when he comes up against an opposition player. On that left hand side. Bang. He's going to have the confidence. And also the pace. To go past the player. If he can. Whether it's knocking it past the player. And just sprinting after it. Whatever. That's going to be a really good. Dangerous player to have on that left hand side as well. Um. Other ones was Marcelo and Rhys James are the only defenders to average more successful crosses, including corners per 90 of a Champions League football, than Simicas. So, um, excluding those who played fewer than three games, which is a key one there as well. So, right there, you see, that is a big part of our game. Early crosses by Robertson on that left-hand side. Uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold on the right-hand side. Nico Williams as well. Now, it'll be Simicas as well. That crossing ability, for a team like Liverpool that don't have a towering centre-forward or anyone like that, it's all about the box play. All about getting that ball in. It's not necessarily about high crosses. It can be mid-range crosses across the floor or just up off, up off the floor, I should say. Getting it in, whipping the balls in fast as possible, that is what we're going to be all about. And when you've got someone like that, and again, yes, these stats really only come from the Champions League, but it takes collectively all of top quality left backs that are in, and full backs as well, and other players that are involved in the Champions League in the European competition. The, the European stage of football that everybody wants to play on. He has that experience as well, which is something else that I would come on to, which is probably also... They, Liverpool were definitely looking to 
by a left back, regardless of who it was, whether it was going to be Simicast or it was going to be Jamal Lewis uh, from Norwich, which obviously that that apparent we put in a ten million pound bid that got knocked back. They were looking for twenty. We moved on, and that's how that worked out. So. It's one of those things. I think that maybe Liverpool were maybe a little bit naive with the Jamal Lewis one. They probably looked at it and thought, well, they're a relegated team. Let's just go and like lowball them with an offer. And they, if, to be fair, he's a talented young lad. It probably was a lowball offer. It really was. Probably just like trying to bank a little bit too much on the fact that, that Norwich got relegated and they were going to need funds or something like that. That Jamal Lewis will probably want to move on. Maybe. Maybe that's what they were banking on. But... I have absolute faith in Liverpool and the way that we've done transfers that Simicas will be a very, very good player. And the way that the um, the Community Shield, make because of how quickly it's going to come about, it's in about like, what day are we on today? 14th. So not this weekend, not the weekend. So it's in like two weekends time because of the amount of rest that they'll probably want to be given, you know, um, the likes of Robertson, maybe some of the first team players as well. There's a very real chance we could see Costas Simicas play for Liverpool against Arsenal. And honestly, that's exciting. Like, yeah, the Community Shield, it's a it's 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 a an award, a trophy of some sort, but really, it's that first thing before the season starts again. And this season is gonna be upon us so so quickly. It's gonna be it's gonna be mad. Like how quickly from the end of this season, let's not forget obviously the Champions League, and that is still going on. It's actually happening tonight as well. Um, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, like it's it's going to be mad how quickly the next season comes about, and the fact that preseason training and stuff like that isn't going to be as lengthy as it was uh, as we've known it to be. But I am excited to see this man play for Liverpool and see what he can do for Liverpool. Make no bones about it, and I'm not lying to you when I say this. I cannot tell you when I've I've watched Simicast. I've not even looked at a YouTube like clips or anything like that. I don't do that. I don't look at YouTube clips for players because it gives you a false, in my opinion, no matter how good the player is, it gives you a false impression of the player. All I want to see, I'm going to go back and watch the full entirety um, Arsenal and um, Olympiacos uh, Europa League game. I want to watch that and I will pay particular focus to him, but I want to watch the whole 90, see what he does in that game. I don't just want to see clips. I don't want to just see clips of take-ons, um, really good passes, maybe really good shots, whatever. I want to see a full picture of what happens. Um, and I like doing that. I think I said that last year as well. I want to see a good game. And I want to see what a bad game looks like as well. I want to see the bits where, you know, maybe a take-on hasn't happened and he's been left out of position. Is that something that's going to be coached into him? I think so. You know, it's the things like that that I want to look out for, not just clips. But I'm very excited to see that we've got good backup, good competition for Robertson. And I'm excited to see him play for Liverpool as well. Now, what I want to go on to as well is, um, not that website, we are looking at, um, this is football365.com. Now, this was 20 hours ago. I don't know if anything has changed, but over the last couple of, over the last day at least, there were rumours that Liverpool, Liverpool are now contacted by Munich and are in talks with Thiago. Now, First of all, before we get into any of what this article says, because I haven't actually read it, but I read the headline and it got me in. Um, I don't think for what any club that goes in for Thiago, whether it is Liverpool, who are apparently the front runners, or whether it's someone else, whether it's another club, another whatever, or whether Bayern Munich, you know, renew, whatever. Until the Champions League is over for Bayern Munich, there's going to be no deal for Thiago. That's not going to happen. It'd be, I think... For a club of Bayern Munich's stature, they will not want a player being announced to sign for someone else while they're still in the Champions League and he'll be playing a pivotal role. He played amazingly against Chelsea and I was one of the ones, when I turned around, I made a video maybe even a month ago saying, I don't know what Thiago brings. What would Thiago bring? And I was purely going off stats. His stats do not read very well when you're looking at attacking football and also defensive football. But what he was doing in the middle of that pitch was absolutely exceptional. And I've been, pro not proved wrong, but I had absolutely no picture of what Thiago could do as a football player. I couldn't, before that game against Chelsea, I couldn't have picked out a performance of Thiago's because I've not, I'm not a Bayern Munich fan. I don't watch Bayern Munich. But what he did against Chelsea and what he was doing, 
as as people are saying, as the conductor in the midfield. He was brilliant, and you can see, like what Rio Ferdinand said, where he says he can see all the angles. I fully, I fully got that picture um, from that game as well. Now, what football365.com is saying, Build reported on Thursday that talks have begun between the two clubs for the transfer of the Spanish midfielder. Now, a club source from Liverpool has come out and said, total nonsense, just because the media says something is going to happen doesn't mean it's going to happen. Now, apparently, the echo in Liverpool is continuing to describe Thiago as not an active target, and Man City have also briefed local reporters that they hold no interest in Thiago. Talk of transfer to PSG is also seen as an attempt to drum up interest in their unwanted midfielder. Sounds really harsh. Like, as... As, as it says, like he's 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 a very good player. So to turn around and say he's an unwanted mid midfielder, I don't know. That sounds pretty harsh. That sounds pretty harsh. Maybe it is the fact that he's twenty nine and and Bayern Munich are wanting to freshen things up with a lot of youth players. Maybe that is something that is is very very true. You're seeing it. Well, obviously they've got Leroy Sane as well, um, Serge Gnabry as well. you know they've got a lot of young players uh, one that we mentioned before um, Alfonso Davies very very young player but very very good maybe that's how they want to go and they want to freshen things up and get rid of some of the old guard um maybe keep a couple around like a, a Muller obviously Lewandowski is not going anywhere because that man is just ridiculous um but yeah I, as I said Thiago to Liverpool probably still doesn't make a lot of sense as good as he is Probably still doesn't make a lot of sense because I, unless someone from our midfield leaves, I don't think that Thiago is going to be coming to Liverpool. I really don't. And I, I don't, you can't just bring it, like, even with Lallana going, you still can't, you still look at our midfield and how many options there are and how many young players are going to be coming through, like Curtis Jones as well, as an example. You can't just turn around and say, well, yeah, let's just get Thiago in. And who are you going to replace in the midfield? Because that midfield is pretty much set. Now, unless Genie Wijnaldum doesn't get offered a contract, which is still surprising me at this moment in time, that apparently contract talks over an extension for Genie Wijnaldum haven't started yet. That is a concern of mine. Because Genie Wijnaldum is... People always say, you know, um, what is it? Um, the book of all trades, master of none. And stuff like that. That's like a common phrase. Is where someone is is good at everything, but they're not a master of everything. I wouldn't say that Genie Wijnaldum is good at everything. I say he's pretty damn great at a lot of things that he does. Very, very defensively, he works so hard in that midfield. He can tackle. He can get the ball back. He can get it back without committing stupid fouls. He can get that ball out of tight spaces. He can move it forward. His passing forward is very good as well. If he's in the box. He's dynamite in the box because of where he's played in the past when he was playing over in the Netherlands and when he plays for uh, the Netherlands as well, his national team. Every single time that man goes on international duties, all I see, notifications, Genie Wijnaldum, goal. The man is very, 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 very good at everything. Not just good. He's very, very good. All of those very goods. This is a man that we need to tie down to something, whatever they're going to do. They need to get him done on some sort of deal. And I imagine that Liverpool will at some point. They may do it when the season starts. When they've got the transfers in. Or trans, you know, transfers out and stuff like that. And then they know what sort of funds that they're sitting with. Maybe that's when they will start doing it. But they don't want to leave, leave it too long. When we've got a Champions League winner. And a Premier League winner. In Genie Wijnaldum. Who was vital in our Champions League win. The two goals against Barcelona alone. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. So no. Um, in my opinion, that one, yeah, we need to get that one sorted straight away. And the final one that we're going to look at here is Trent Alexander-Arnold got the Young Player of the War, uh, young, yeah, young Player of the Year award. You can tell I haven't done these in a little bit. Um, Thirteen assists, four goals. The man is just absolutely fantastic. He is just an exceptional player, absolutely exceptional player. I can't even remember how old he is. What twenty years old is he? He's twenty-one. He's 21 years old. Um, he's, you know, he's always built. He's the scouser in our team. We will have more of them in our team, but he is the one, the best right back in the world, bar none. Bar none. You can throw up any name. Premier League, Bundesliga, La Liga, whoever you want, anywhere you want. He's the best right back in the world. 
what he is doing at right back, if you put him into midfield, I'm I'm telling you now he'd be getting De Bruyne level um you know attention and De Bruyne level assists and goals. I absolutely guarantee he would be. He really would be. The fact that what he's doing from right back is just nothing short of exceptional. Like I know that there are a lot there are a lot of calls for Trent Alexander Arnold to get, eventually get moved into midfield. But if he's doing this good at right back and he's the best right back in the world, why do we move him from there? You know, and he he had some stiff competition for the young player of the year of look yeah, young player of the year award. He really did. He had some stiff competition, but he actually he's just been exceptional. He has been exceptional and he will continue to be exceptional for Liverpool as long as he wants to be. I'm fully behind Trent Alexander-Arnold. I'm fully behind any one of our team, any single member of our team. I am fully behind every single one of them at any point, but he's been absolutely brilliant. Really, really, really good. And is starting to change what is expected. Him and Robertson, similar to like the likes of, uh, you know, Danny Alves back in the day, uh, or Marcelo, Roberto Carlos. Those type, I'm not, people will say, you can't compare it to these people Listen, you're only looking at these guys as legend status. Only because Trent and Andy Robertson and that lot, because they're young and they play for Liverpool, you can't be comparing them to like Danny Alves. You can't be comparing them to Roberto Carlos, this, that and the other. But what they're doing for the modern game right now, especially in English football, is change what is expected from your fullbacks. And they're doing it very, very well. Like you hear it all the time. Like Wan Bissaka is a fantastic actual right back defender. Really, really good. Yes, he slide tackles a lot. And I'm not a big fan of, you know, making big old slide tackles all the time. But he's a very good defensive right back. And his crossing has improved a little bit. But you can see it when he, he's got pace to run forward. He's got the physicality to hold players off. But when he's coming to deliver that final ball, it hasn't always been there. And you hear that disappointment when in like United fans when they're just like, oh, man. If he can get that ball in, and especially with the way that United play, and they do have some very physical, tall players in there as well, in the in the box. Once he gets his delivery sorted, he's also going to be up there as one of the best right-backs as well. Defensively, he's probably better than Trent Alexander-Arnold. But as the whole package of a right-back right now for the modern game, Trent Alexander-Arnold's the one. Absolutely, 100%. No doubt about it. Um, and that is all I have for today. So... I have enjoyed making this video. It's a long, long video. Um, and thank you every... If you've made it this far into the video, I thank you ever so much for it, honestly. Um, what I would say, what I said at the start of the video about mental health and stuff like that, don't worry about me too much. What I wanted to communicate there is to make sure that you're keeping yourself in check. I wasn't. For the first couple of weeks, I wasn't keeping myself in check. And I was letting myself get absolutely pulled down. I'm working on it daily now. I'm working on it almost, sometimes on it's on an hourly basis. I'm having to check myself to make sure that I'm not getting drowned and pulled under by this up here. It's hard to keep in control sometimes. Try to make sure that you can keep yourself in check. And if you can, try to make sure that you've got someone that you can lean on as well. Um, I have been someone that can be lent on um, for so long um, and I've been, I say I enjoy doing it. I like caring for people, like, you know, taking care of people and stuff like that. That's what I like to do. Maybe maybe that's what I should do as a career path. But I've never allowed other people to let me lean on them, if you know what I mean. I've always wanted to be like, you know, I have to appear strong at all times. And that's not that's not the way to move forward. It won't be the way to move forward for me. So that's all I wanted to communicate in almost this 25 minute video my god i apologize for that um there will be other videos coming definitely i don't know when when i'm off night shift which is hopefully in a couple of weeks at least if not a shorter amount of time hopefully we can get back to some sort of regular scheduled programming shall we say but for now i'm gonna get out of here i'm gonna go make some food i'm not gonna make some food actually i'm gonna order a pizza because i want one um <laughs> Please enjoy your weekend, whatever you're doing. Hope you can make the most of whatever days you've got right now. Also, I realize I'm wearing a hoodie, but it's because it's the first thing I grabbed before I made a video. How hot is it in the UK? It's disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. It's ridiculous how hot it is right now. I hate it. Like, first thing I'm going to be doing, cold shower. That's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to order a pizza. I'm going to get a cold shower. 
Thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do like it and subscribe if you're new around here. Please feel free to get your comments in about anything in the comments section below. But for now, I'm going to get out of here. Take care and I will catch you later.